Have you ever noticed how widespread the sport of robot combat has become across the globe? People of all nations come together to build and design combat robots before making them beat the living daylights out of each other. But despite this common goal of complete chaos, robot combat has evolved in different ways in different areas of the world. Certain countries are world leaders in the sport, creating some of the most advanced combat robots yet, while in other countries, the sport is only just getting started. Our journey begins in the United States of America, where a gentleman named Mark Thorpe created the very first annual Robot Wars event in 1994. It was a great success, and not only did it inspire teams to start creating fighting robots from pretty much anything, it called the eye of a record label known as Profile Records, who partnered up with Mark Thorpe to make Robot Wars even more popular. However, four years later, the partners began to have many disagreements about the events, which ultimately resulted in Profile Records going behind Mark Thorpe's back and selling his ideas of Robot Wars to mentor and broadcasting in the UK. Now the BBC owned the rights to Robot Wars and began to release the first series in the UK, a great success. This crushed any hopes that Robot Wars events could continue in America because Profile Records were more than ready to sue Mark Thorpe if he continued to host events in the US under the name Robot Wars. Many court cases later, two builders from the original Robot Wars, Trey Roski and Greg Munson, hosted the very first BattleBots event in 1999, a huge success that allowed American robot combat to thrive alongside the now British-owned Robot Wars. So that pretty much sums up the birth of robot combat, but how does it look in the USA today? Well, it only takes one quick YouTube search to witness the destruction of modern BattleBots. Extremely expensive and explosive robots such as Biteforce and Tombstone do battle in a huge arena, which shows that modern American robot combat hasn't changed much in terms of the original concept, which is great. With the exception of modern BattleBots, American arenas are known for taking a very much no-nonsense approach with little or no hazards. The rise of events such as robo games caused teams to find ways of knocking out their opponents immediately without any help from the arena at all, and this tended to be the same in all weight classes. This didn't however stop robots such as Original Sin from using their arena walls to their advantage and using their wedges and wedgelets to deflect spinners away. The wedge vs spinner conflict continues further down into the insect classes, but here you are more likely to find arenas with pits. All of this is not to say that other weapon types aren't successful in America. Robots like Biohazard successfully use lifters to win matches, and Ziggy, a robot with a flipper, essentially retired the super heavyweight category by beating everything thrown in its path. Innovative robots such as Kelpie and Spooky Bite Bite are successfully bringing weapon diversity into the insect weight classes as well, and Chomp, a hammerbot, is possibly the most technologically advanced robot in the sport. However, almost every type of design has to incorporate a wedge of some form in order to win the battle for ground clearance and ultimately control the fight. In fact, the cancellation of classic BattleBots helped shape the modern era of robot combat, as people have realised that just entering boxes with wedges doesn't really make great television. Every robot must have an exciting active weapon in order to be, con in order to be considered for BattleBots. It's crazy to think that the greatest sport in the world stemmed from one man trying to create a remote control vacuum cleaner in his kitchen. The truth is, if I had to cover the full evolution of American robot combat, I would be here for the next few months or so, but we have a lot of countries to get through, so let's take a trip to the UK. After the kind of copyright controversy I mentioned earlier, the UK ended up with Robot Wars, a really successful show that ran for more than seven original series from 1998 to 2005 and had a reboot from 2016 to 2017. This show was so important to so many people, like this show was my life as a child. Because of it, the UK has a thriving live circuit. Robot Wars has the same concept as BattleBots but in very different arenas, and a bit more producer interference. However, it's different to the US in many ways. The British are most well known for perfecting the pneumatic flipper. Outside of Robot Wars, heavyweight spinners are very rarely allowed on the UK live circuit for safety reasons, which led people to find other ways of dominating fights. Throwing things out of the arena. Most arenas in the UK contain very large zones at the edges of the arena and comparatively short walls. Getting underneath your opponent and simply throwing them out of the arena became a favourite way of winning fights, and to this day, the greatest pneumatic flippers in the world are built in the UK. Control bots developed alongside flippers as well, in order to take advantage of the pit, a hazard made popular by Robot Wars. And as with every country, there's robots which completely broke the meta and still won various tournaments such as Terahertz. 
Spinners in the featherweight category thrived even though their heavyweight counterparts were banned thanks to events such as Robo Challenge. In fact, some vertical spinners are better at throwing their opponents through the air than flippers are. And of course, the UK insect classes are especially diverse, with everything from spinners, wedges, axes and control bots becoming competition winners. An internet series called Bugglebots showcased many of these designs and inspired even more creativity in the, in the insect classes, as well as providing a starting point for new teams. In the heavyweight class in the US, it's pretty much entirely dominated by spinners, whereas here, it's kind of more of a flipper festival every time you watch a live event. And in the US, it seems very much a kill or be killed environment, while in the UK, you're more likely to see lengthy strategic fights in the heavyweight class. However, both the US and the UK have incredibly diverse inset classes. Internet series such as Bugglebots have brought these weight classes into the modern era and generally made people realise that they can get involved in the sport. My way of putting it would be all of the action of heavyweight robots concentrated into things that are a fraction of the weight. In fact, Battlebots and the British live circuit pretty much insist that you have some experience in these lower weight classes before going anywhere near heavyweight robot. Just like the US, it's very tricky to summarise British robot combat, but what, what I will say is that it's some of the best in the world. One thing is for certain, and that is that the US and the UK have definitely influenced robot combat competitions in other areas of the world. Maybe a little too much in some cases. A few years ago, China leapt out of nowhere onto the robot combat scene with shows like King of Bots and This Is Fighting Robots. Despite the controversies regarding copyright, not paying people who should have been paid and essentially cheating teams out of their victories, you can't deny that this is the coolest looking arena. As I said before, a lot of Chinese robots have been influenced by American and British designs, which is inevitable given the fact that it's still relatively new to robot combat. The most successful Chinese robots seem to be vertical spinners or just wedges with lifters attached to them. It's hard to decide a matter because it's hardly ever the Chinese robot that actually ends up winning the Chinese tournaments, and it's even harder to pick the most successful Chinese robots because the show seems to be based more around celebrities than the actual robots that are fighting. Oh well. Recently we have seen Chinese teams appearing in western shows such as Battlebots and the UK live circuit, and they've shown that they can compete against successful robots here. I honestly have no idea, Chinese robot combat definitely has a lot of potential, but the general reliability and just the raw power of the machines doesn't quite match that of the US or the UK just yet. Moving on, let's take a look at the Russian robot combat scene, and now the Russian robot combat scene is personally one of my absolute favourites. Obviously the robots aren't as advanced or as high tech as some of the robots we have in Battlebots, most of them seem fairly simple robots made of tubular metal and armoured with plastic you could find pretty much anywhere. And that's what I love about it, you don't need to have £20,000 sitting in a bank account and a laser cutter in order to build a heavyweight like you would in the West, literally all you need is the materials and the hand tools. That's the kind of element that I miss from modern Battlebots, the feeling that anyone can have a go at building a heavyweight and still be decently competitive. The fights in Russian events such as Bits for Robotov are always really entertaining, and the weapon of choice seems to be horizontal spinners or pneumatic flippers. Russian events also lead to the debuts of teams from countries like Kazakhstan, Estonia and Iran. Speaking of Iran, there is definitely a robot combat scene there, it's just that I can't seem to find any actual videos of it to show you. The reason that I know there is a robot combat scene there is partly because there's quite a lot of teams that compete in international tournaments representing Iran. Almost too many for it not to be at least decently well known there. And uh, the robots, they're actually of a pretty good standard and they don't just magically become of a pretty good standard, they have to fight. I also asked a friend who comes from Iran about this and he said that he had heard about tournaments like this in Iran in places like colleges and things. So there must be something there. What's interesting is that if there are no Iranian robots at all, then the sport of robot combat pretty much doesn't exist in the Middle East, except from when Battlebots is broadcast on Discovery in each country there. The footage that you're currently watching is of an Iranian robot competing in an event in India. Now India is definitely looking promising in terms of robot combat. The very first Indian robot appeared on Battlebots this month and there are numerous events that can be found on YouTube. It's mostly made up of young teams who tend to build very good robots with vertical spinners, and some of them are particularly powerful. 
However, the Indian robot combat scene has been surrounded with notoriety for the past five years or so, and this is because of the general safety of the arenas there. There's a clip on YouTube, which I won't show here, where a spinning bar from a robot flies out of an arena and hits a young man directly in the face. Thankfully, he made a full recovery, but there's going to be a lot worse accidents than that if arena safety doesn't begin to have a large improvement, especially because of how amazingly powerful some of the Indian robots are. Our journey continues to South Korea, where there aren't actually any heavyweight robot events that take place. Heavyweight South Korean robots, including Orbi Blade, usually end up competing in foreign tournaments such as King of Bots and BattleBots. Team Orbi actually hosts their own Antweight event, one of which was an extremely competitive, invite-only competition. Very fancy. Almost all of the robots from South Korea tend to be spinners, and the focus is absolutely on the Antweight category. From Korea we go to Australia, and things have certainly improved from the Australian disasters we used to see in the Robot Wars World Championships decades ago. Antweights, Beetleweights and Featherweights are quite popular down under, and competitions sometimes have different leagues depending on ability. The best known Australian Robot is probably Death Roll, and it's one of the most destructive heavyweights in the world. Annie Are You Okay actually caused chaos in Bogglebot, it's one of my favourite beetleweights ever. If you want to find out more about Australian combat robotics, you can always ask Team Panic, a team from Adelaide who regularly fight in competitions and upload probably some of the most helpful robot combat content on YouTube. His videos truly display the creativity in Australian robot combat. While we're here, let's talk about New Zealand. New Zealand is actually pretty similar to Australia, seeing as there's quite a few notable heavyweights that compete internationally, such as Endgame, but most of the action is centered around Beetleweights and Antweights. Pretty much everything you need to know can be found on the Combat Robotics New Zealand channel, the link of which is in the description. Dutch and German Combat Robotics kind of evolved alongside British Combat Robotics. Both of them got their own editions of Robot Wars, and the Dutch robots especially became very feared in the UK. Robots such as Petunia, Tough as Nails, Tomahawk, and Gravity are still around and dangerous to this very day. A robot called Ominous, a spinner with Omni Wheels, was supposed to compete in BattleBots but pulled out because of the pandemic. A clusterbot by the name of Jaeger from Germany also attempted to compete but withdrew for the same reason. The Dutch and Germans always bring the most unique and some of the most kind of innovative designs to the table. Here are some fights from the Winter Challenge 2012 in Brasilia, the home of Minotaur and Black Dragon. Those are some serious teams as well, so Brazil is not to be messed with. Riobots, the team who made Minotaur, have actually published a book which tells you everything you need to know about combat robots, and lots of robots have been built using guidance from that book. So you could say that Brazil has had a lot of influence in robot combat. Antweights and Beetleweights, and this seems to be a recurring theme in this video, are all the rage right now. And another recurring theme is that they love their spinners. A lot of damage. Brazilian robots only seem to begin to appear when robo games became a thing in around 2005, but they've quickly shown that they're extraordinarily efficient and destructive. Now for some more obscure robot combat. According to several unreliable sources, several competitions have taken place in Uganda. The winner of these tournaments was a robot called Spoon, which won things because it had the lowest ground clearance. It was three inches off the ground. I reckon it just drove through things instead of underneath them. I mean, at least the sport has reached more than just Southern Africa. Uh, I mean, that's a good thing. I just realised that because it won all of its fights, Spoon and Rusty literally have better win-to-loss ratios than Bite Force. <laughs> Spoon is the greatest combat robot in the world. I mean, at least there's a picture of Spoon that exists. In Egypt, there's literally no evidence of the competitions that supposedly happened there. Apart from one line on a wiki, and get this right, you're never going to believe this, it was won by a wedge. Oh, oh my goodness, groundbreaking stuff there uh, from the Egyptians. Moving on. Our long and treacherous journey ends in the Philippines with a robot named Banana Ketchup. Banana Ketchup is a featherweight robot that essentially turned up to a Filipino event and beat up all of the lightweights. Then it went to China and beat up all of the lightweights again. It is honestly a really successful robot. The combat robot situation in the Philippines is reminiscent of that of South Korea. Obviously, it's, it's still a developing country, so it's not as common, but uh, it's mostly spinners fighting it out in the lower weight classes. And there's always one really OP team called Team Metabaino that win everything, and they're good enough to try and apply to compete in BattleBots. Why did they get rejected? I want to see a heavyweight banana ketchup. That's right. 
If you made it to the end of this video, thank you so much. It took so much time to research each of these countries, write the script, which is about four pages long, and actually commentate and edit the video. So I really hope um, that it does well and that you enjoyed it. If you did enjoy the video, don't forget to like and subscribe. If you are celebrating anything, then I hope you are having an excellent time. And even if you aren't celebrating anything, I hope you're having a great time as well and enjoying the holidays. That is all from me today. Thank you very much and good night, everybody.